Welcome to Rex Kwando, where we will get you jacked with our new supplement pack. You'll have the body of a Greek god. You'll be built like a brick ice house or an ice brick house. This is Tommy, and every day for 10 days, he's been eating a cup of powder from every one of these tubs of our get Jack pack. And now it's time for the big reveal. Tommy, show them your guns. What happened? Did you eat a full cup every day? I thought it said half. Then you're half jacked. Today's video is part three of our series about the liquefy effect in video. Part one is about tracking the position of the liquefy effect to your video, and part two is about tracking it with rotation also. Both of those videos mostly talk about tracking liquefy to a face. Links to both of those videos are in the notes down below if you want to check them out. But today's video is about tracking the effect to something other than a face, which in this case was muscles. We are also going to go over how to get rid of the tracking markers that we put on Grant's arms. Liquify is not necessarily the perfect tool for doing body modifications, but sometimes it can be a quick and efficient way to do a lot without having to get into the more complex VFX. One of the best body modifications that I always seem to think of is from Captain America the First Avenger, when they made Chris Evans very skinny for the first 30 minutes of that movie. He was very bulked up in real life, but they made him look thin and frail for the movie. They used a lot of different methods to accomplish this, and even used a body double for some of the shots, but other shots were done just by re-sculpting his body. And that's what we did here, using the liquify effect on Grant. One thing I always say about doing VFX shots is make a good plan. Visualize how you're going to do the effect so you can know how you need to shoot your footage. If you're not doing your own VFX, consult with your VFX artist and make a plan that will give you your best chance to pull off the shot without creating problems for yourself in post. For the video I shot here, I wanted Grant to have one huge muscle and one skinny muscle. But I didn't want to have to show the effect for the first part of the video where I was just talking, so I draped a tablecloth over him and made the joke be the big reveal when his muscles get exposed. That way I only had to create the effect for the part of the video where it was really needed. The other thing I needed to plan was how I would track the effect to the center of his bicep. With that part of the arm being very smooth, it would be difficult to get a good track. So I took a couple of small pieces of gaff tape and stuck them on his arm where I wanted the center of the effect to be. So now that I have my footage shot, let's jump into After Effects and get started. What I want to do is track these points on the biceps and then put a liquify effect on those trackers. The first thing I'm going to do is rename my footage layer to main footage. The part that I need to put the effect on is near the end of the footage, so I want to divide this footage. I go in the timeline to the point just before where I want the effect to start and I use Control shift d to divide the footage. Now I have main footage and main footage 2. Main footage 2 is the clip that I'll be adding the VFX to. I'm ready now to track the markers and I'll be doing them one at a time. I go forward in the footage until his arms are completely raised and find a frame where the markers are very clear with no motion blur. I can use page up and page down to step through my footage one frame at a time. Before I track, I'm going to create two null objects and name one of them right bicep and the other one left bicep. These nulls are what I will apply the track data to. I select my main footage to layer and right click it and select track and stabilize and then choose track motion. I move my tracker to the spot on the tape marker on the right bicep. I pick the corner of the tape that is most centrally located on the muscle. I expand my tracker and search area and then use the track forward button. After it finishes, I can open the drop down on main footage 2 to see my tracking keyframes. And I can see the little section at the beginning that isn't tracked yet. I go in the timeline to the first track keyframe and I use the analyze one frame backwards button. It tracked okay, so I continue tracking backwards, one frame at a time, until the blur is too much and the automatic tracker can't find the tape tracker. For those frames, I move the tracker manually to where I think it should be. As the arm rotates, the marker is no longer on the center of the muscle, so I don't put the tracker on the tape marker for those frames. Instead, I put it on the center of the muscle. I try to center in between the top and the bottom of the muscle, and I only use the tape markers to guide how far side to side on his arm it should be. The main goal of this is to keep the tracker on the center of the liquify effect that we want to add, which in this case is the center of the arm. 
I scrub through the footage a little bit and see that the marker looks good and now I can apply it to the null. To do this, I select Edit Target and choose Right Bicep as the target. I hit OK and then apply it and then hit OK to apply dimensions to X and Y. Now the right null object is locked to the center of the right bicep. Okay, I hope that all made sense because now we need to do it to the other arm. So I find the spot in the footage where the tape on the left bicep is clear with no motion blur and I right click the main footage to layer and again choose track and stabilize and then choose track motion. I move the tracker to the corner of the tape that is most centrally located on the arm and track forwards. After it finishes, I do the same process for the beginning of the clip as we did on the other arm. Again, focusing on keeping the tracker on the center of the arm, even when the tape drifts to the edge. I apply the tracking data to the left bicep null, and now we have a null object tracked to both biceps. I'm going to be tracking the liquify effect to these two nulls, but I also need to erase my two tape markers. To do this, I'm going to do a skin graft, kind of. Gross! I'm going to put a little piece of skin over those tape markers, and I'm going to need to track those skin graphs to the null objects also. But the way we are doing this, I need to track the liquify effects to one set of nulls, but the skin graft effects to a different set. So I need to duplicate my nulls. I shift click and select both nulls at once and then use Control D to duplicate them. Now I have bicep nulls and bicep nulls too. I move the number two nulls to the top so that they are grouped together. I'm going to rename all of these so I can keep it straight as to what I'm applying to each null. I change the names to left bicep liquify and right bicep liquify and left bicep skin grafts and right bicep skin grafts. I actually should add the word null to the end of these just to really define what they are, but I actually will do that in a little bit, but at this point I didn't think of it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hide my null objects. I don't need them in the way for this part. Now, for removing the tape markers. One quick way I could do this is with Red Giant's Spot Clone Tracker. This is an After Effects plugin that costs money. It's pretty amazing and makes short work of erasing the tape markers, but I'm going to proceed as if you don't have the Spot Clone Tracker and do all this inside of After Effects without using any plugins, or at least no plugins that cost anything. We already have our null objects to track to, so I'm going to make the skin graph nulls visible again. I need to create a little piece of skin to put over each tape marker. Again, gross! So here's how I do it. I go to my main footage too, and I find a good frame where I can take a skin graph from. I find a frame that is near the middle of the footage, and it seems like the lighting is pretty consistent with the rest of the scene, so I will use this frame. I use Control D to duplicate my main footage too and rename it to right arm graft. Now I right click the right arm graft layer and go up to time and then choose freeze frame. This layer will only be this frame now no matter where in the timeline I go. I need to find a spot on the arm to graft and place over the tape. I need the brightness to be about the same as where the tape is, so I pick a spot near the tape and draw a mask that is a little larger than the tape marker. I then select the right arm graph layer and hit P to bring up the position. Before I go on, I do want to add the word null to the end of all my null layers, so I go ahead and add the word null before I start parenting anything to those null layers. When that's finished, I select the right arm skin graph null layer and hit P to bring up its position. I pick with the right arm graph position to the right bicep skin graph null position. I see now that my skin graph jumped here onto his head. Instead of dragging it into place with position, I'm going to only use its anchor point to move it around. I hit A under the right arm graph layer and start adjusting the anchor point until the skin is over the tape marker. When I have it in place, I adjust the mask feather and maybe even the mask expansion if it's not totally covering the tape. If I go ahead and hit play, most of the footage is already working, but the beginning is going to need some special attention. So I go to one of the first frames in the timeline where the graft is covering the tape properly and I click the stopwatch on the anchor point to create a keyframe. I use page down to step backwards through my footage and adjust the anchor point to keep the graph in place. I reach a point that the tape marker is a blur and the graph doesn't cover it. So I use page up to go forwards a few frames to a point where everything looks good and I hit shift M 
to bring up the mask path and I use the stopwatch to create a keyframe. I step backwards through the footage and adjust the mask shape to cover the blurred tape. The graph is too bright at this point, but we'll adjust that in a minute. I continue through the rest of the footage, adjusting only the anchor point and the mask path to cover the tape up completely. On this spot, where the graph goes across the shadow on the arm, I adjust the mask to where it doesn't. When I adjust the mask brightness in a minute, these spots where it's partly in light and partly in shadow won't work very well, so I avoid it where possible. I'm now going to click the stopwatch for the mask opacity because there are several frames at the beginning that I don't want to see my skin graph. I set the opacity to zero when I don't want to see it, and I set a keyframe for it to be fully visible at 100 when I do want it to be visible. Now when I play the footage, the tape marker is covered, but the graph is too bright at the beginning. So I drag in a curves effect and go to the frame where the brightness is right and click the stopwatch on the curves effect to create a keyframe for that. Now I can go through my footage adjusting the brightness when it's not blending well. I'm only going to move this top handle in the curves effect to darken it down. Okay, it's a little hard for me to see how well it's blending with all of this stuff in the way, so I'm going to get rid of it by hitting Control shift h This turns off helpers. Now I can see how well it's blending without all the little gadgets in the way. But don't forget to hit Control shift h again to have your helpers come back on. If you're working in here later and you can't see any of the helpers and you're trying to figure out why, you probably just forgot to turn them back on. After I go through the footage and get the brightness pretty much right throughout, I can play the footage and it should look pretty good. Even if a few of the frames aren't perfect, I just keep working on it until I get it as good as I can. When I'm finished, I can turn my helpers back on, Control shift h And now I can go ahead and close the drop downs for the right arm graft and the right bicep skin graft null. Now we're ready for the other arm. Like before, I go to the main footage 2 layer and use Control d to duplicate it. I rename it to left arm graft. I find a good frame to freeze and create a skin graph from, and then I right click the layer, go to time, and choose freeze frame. I draw my mask, and I open the position by hitting P under the left arm graft, and P for the position under the left bicep skin graft null. I adjust the feather and the mask expansion like before. Then I pick whip the left arm graft position to the position of the left bicep skin graft null. The skin graph jumps off the screen, but again, I use the anchor point to put it where it goes. I use the same process that I did on the other arm to create the keyframes for the anchor point and the mask path, and I work on the beginning of the clip also to make sure that it looks like the tape is erased. I add the curves effect like before and use the stopwatch to create keyframes to make the brightness match throughout the clip. On this arm, the footage towards the end of the clip needs a little extra adjustment when the arm goes into a little bit of shadow. After I finish my adjustments, I play the footage and now the tape markers are gone. So at this point, I have the trackers for my liquify effect and the tape removed from each arm. So I'm ready for the fun part. I want to start by pre-composing all of the layers I have except for the two liquify nulls. So I select all of it and pre-compose and select move all attributes and hit OK. I go ahead and rename this new comp to new main comp. I make my two liquify nulls visible again. If you can't see your nulls, remember to make sure your helpers are visible with shift control H. I move to the point in the timeline where the arms are up and I want my effect fully on and I add the liquify effect to my new main comp layer. I go to the distortion mesh offset and alt click the stopwatch. I'm doing the right bicep first. So I select the right bicep liquify null and hit P to open up the positioning for that null. Then I pick with the distortion mesh offset in the liquify effect to the position of the right bicep liquify null. Now I can go to the liquify effect in the new main comp layer and start making my changes and it will track to the null object. Therefore, the liquify will stay in the middle of the bicep even as it moves. I use the pucker effect and start to shrink the right bicep. To adjust my brush size, I can hold the control button and hold down the left mouse button and I'll adjust the size as I move the mouse. I use a series of clicks for this effect. You can hold down the mouse button and drag the mouse for the effect, but you can really do too much too fast if you're not careful. After I finish shrinking the bicep, I use the liquify warp tool to push the area near the elbow back into a more natural shape. 
Now, if I play the footage, the liquify effect will track to the arm. The only part that isn't really working quite right is near the beginning where he raises his arms. But that's one of the reasons that I wanted to use this clip as an example, to show you a method of addressing something like this. Now, I purposely planned this shot to have the cape over his arms so that the liquify effect would only be used while his arms were up, and just for a second while he quickly raises his arms. I go in the timeline to where he is raising his arms and I can see that the effect looks a little weird. If I move the right bicep liquify null, it will actually relocate the liquify position. So I can move that around a little bit and try to fix the frames that are bad. I use the page up and page down to step through the footage and make minor adjustments to the position of the null and make the liquify effect better for those particular frames. After I get it as good as I can, I want to make the liquify effect fade in. Maybe not actually fade in, but go from zero strength to full strength over a few frames. I find the point in the timeline where I want it to be at full strength, and I go into the liquify effect in the new main comp and hit the stopwatch in the distortion percentage to create a keyframe set at 100%. I use page up to step backwards through the footage to a point where I want the effect completely off, and I set the distortion percentage to zero. Now, the effect will go from zero to full over those few frames. Now when I play the footage, it's working pretty good. You might need to continue to adjust this a little bit to work out any weird spots, but for me, this arm looks pretty good and I can move on to the other arm. I'm going to go ahead and close the drop down for the liquify effect. I don't need to work in that one anymore. Next, I want to drag in a new liquify effect into the new main comp layer, and it shows up as liquify 2. I close the drop down for the right bicep liquify null and hit P on the left bicep liquify null. This opens the position data for that null. I go back to my new main comp and I alt click the stopwatch for the distortion mesh offset in the new liquify effect. I'm going to pick whip the distortion mesh offset for liquify 2 to the position of the left bicep liquify null. Now I can begin making the left arm bicep bigger. I use the bloat tool and the warp tool to get the muscle looking the way I want. When I finish and hit play, the liquify effect is tracked to the muscle. I do want to have the liquify effect go from off to full strength at the beginning like I did on the other one, so I set keyframes on the distortion percentage to go from 0 to 100 to fade in the effect. I could actually go above 100% for the distortion percentage if I wanted to and exaggerate the effect, but I'm going to stick with 100% for what I'm doing. At this point, my liquify effects are finished. So I select all of my layers and pre-compose them and move all attributes. Now I use Keylight 1.2 to key out the green. You can use Primac here or whatever you want to remove the green, but Keylight comes for free with After Effects. After I get it keyed, I bring in a background. I create some shadows, add in some tubs of powder and work on matching it all together. Finally, I can render my shot out as a finished VFX shot. Tommy, show them your guns! What happened? If you like these types of VFX tutorials, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon down below so you'll be notified when we drop new content. But that's it for today's video. I would truly love to see what you guys create using this. The liquify effect gets some really fun and crazy results. So, you know, post what you create down in the comments below. It'd be really fun to check it out. Later.